Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy, weather rates certified 11 years in a row. And that's the good news that despite what you may think, that air is starting to clear, right? The smoke? Yeah, right let's along. get it out of here, right? Yes, please. <laughs> Nobody likes it, but the progress is here. We've already seen our particulate matter curbed as a result live view from Enzyme Peak. Now it's still hazy as thin smoke holds on, but air quality due to ozone in the moderate category. And we've cleared Davis County, Tooele County, and Carbon County. So particulate matter, not the issue. We typically deal with ozone this time of year, and that's on the eastern side of the state, as well as portions of the Wasatch Front. So we are getting that thicker smoke out of here, and it's with the help of our southwesterly flow. Thin smoke throughout the state, but as we take that step back, you're able to see that the thicker smoke has pushed over to the east, moving out of our area and further away from the Beehive State. Our smoke source up in Canada. We do have a low pressure system in the Pacific Northwest. That is also amping up our southwesterly flow, but you notice that's also pushing a lot of that heavier smoke out of our region. Good news there. So air quality improving, storm coverage increasing. Right now we've got temperatures in the 70s and 80s, 84 in Salt Lake. We are running nine degrees above seasonal norms at this hour. We were at 85, 81 in Moab. We've got 60s, 70s and 80s throughout the central portion of the state. And you can see exactly where we have some storms overhead, 87 in St. George at this hour. Above average warmth. You've heard me say that a lot. And that's really assisted in melting our record snowpack because as we look back February, March, we were still accumulating that. Our record in April of 30 inches for our snow water equivalent. And then here comes the warmth, and that snow just starts to dwindle, coming off of the mountains and causing those high river flows. We still have plenty of snow, and we will likely be dealing with spring runoff through July. Taking a look at some of the waterways that are not under alerts, but in the next seven days will rise or get close to flood stage. That includes the Logan River, a portion of the Weber River, Little Bear, and Little Cottonwood Creek. We also know areas in Park City and Silver Creek are are near that action stage or above it. So still use extreme caution by our waterways. We talked about the flood warnings in effect and those hold on. Another type of flooding, flash flooding. And here's why. Live view from Zion. Look at those angry clouds. We've been tracking these storms. Southern and central Utah seeing the most when it comes to storm development. Satellite radar shows you where we were this afternoon and how those storms filled in in the north, really central Utah and into eastern Utah and down south. Noticeable here on the eastern side of the state into Utah County and in the west desert. This is going to change as we head into tomorrow. We're not going to get rid of storms or flash flood potential. We see the possibility in many locations. Zion steps away from it, but the possibility is out there today for them. Futurecast taking us through what to expect. We've got a stalled front that's going to impact us and a system that's kind of meandering in the Pacific Northwest, which will send energy our way. Overnight, fairly quiet, just isolated activities. But by tomorrow, we get scattered thunderstorms throughout northern and central Utah. Notice how by lunchtime, we've got those storms developing. They really amp up as we make it through the evening, including Salt Lake County, Utah County. And look at all that activity over in the West Desert. As we roll into our Wednesday, quiet to start the day, but don't be fooled. We have the potential to see strong storms holding on for the northern half of the state. Excessive rainfall. There's a potential for it in the northwest corner of the state, a marginal risk put out by the Storm Prediction Center. Looking at those temperatures, 70s and 80s with thunderstorm threat for tomorrow, 70s and 80s on the eastern side of the state, 90s down in St. George. Now, southwest corner of the state steps away from the moisture. Winds will be the big talker as those temperatures remain above average, partly cloudy skies. For the Wasatch Front, that's gonna be a little different. We get active conditions, scattered storms tomorrow, then into Wednesday, more isolated for Thursday and the close of the work week, and you can't rule out a chance over Memorial Day weekend. What you can count on are those temperatures. Well, they stay away from the 70s, above average for the next seven. Ooh. All right, yeah. and that little star there just means holiday. No weather Holiday icon, week. Right? Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> just means it's a gold star. We're making yeah, it through this stormy it. week, but yeah, Memorial You've Day. You've earned it. Yeah. You've earned the gold star. Well, thanks. <laughs> Everybody earns it. <laughs>